Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. In this podcast, we'll talk about vertical farming and see how this practice could help increase food production, solve some of the current challenges facing modern agriculture and contribute to urban sustainability. So, let's get vertical. By 2050, an estimated two-thirds of the world population will live in urban areas and they will need food. So, what do you do when you need to produce more in less space? You grow upwards instead of outwards. Precisely. Vertical farming is about growing crops such as lettuce, tomatoes, strawberries or basil in vertically stacked layers or inclined surfaces, sometimes integrated into buildings. Grown without soil or sunlight, plants are suspended in water or mist that contains all the nutrients they need. Needless to say, this farming method is underpinned by technologies like data analytics, robotics and artificial intelligence that help optimise growth conditions and manage the farm. So what are its advantages? Well, there are several. Year-round, predictable production, price stability, independent of weather or climate so unaffected by drought or frost, less land and water use. But also less need for pesticides. And you can even grow vegetables to be more nutritious and tasty. So why aren't all farmers going vertical? Well, first of all, this method works well with leafy green vegetables, but not with cereals such as rice or wheat. A second problem is that vertical farms are extremely energy hungry, so their future is highly dependent on the availability of greener energy sources, improvements in battery storage and the efficiency of LED lights that are used to replace sunlight. Having said that, higher energy costs could be partially offset by savings from using less pesticides, lower transport, storage and distribution costs and less waste. But truth is, the carbon footprint of vertical farms is still causing debate among scientists. Another reason behind the relatively small number of vertical farming initiatives in Europe so far is that it's not straightforward. What works for some companies or on a small scale might not be the right model for others. There are also high startup and scale up costs, as well as a high level of specialization. Go visit a vertical farm and you're more likely to meet mechanical and biological engineers, data scientists and cyber experts than traditional farmers. So, will growing food vertically be a distinctive feature of the urban architecture of the future? Well, it's clear that vertical farming won't feed the world. And while cost effectiveness is still questionable, with technological advances and the confidence and knowledge that come with experience, Vertical farming can become a real alternative, and one that solves some of the challenges of modern agriculture while contributing to urban sustainability. And the approach may work particularly well for some crops in some environments, such as cities where land is scarce and expensive, or urban food deserts. So, what can the EU do to help it take off? Here's Nira Kulianik from the European Parliamentary Research Service. The EU has been funding initiatives related to vertical farming under research programs and development funds. But this farming method is not covered by EU agricultural and climate policies. So the first thing would be to recognize it in European public policy. Under current EU rules, vertical farming is not considered as organic farming. So a special certification system may be needed as well as common standards for vertical farming facilities and practices. More research will also be needed to reduce operational costs and high energy consumption so as to make vertical farming more profitable and accepted by consumers. Want to know more? Check out Nira Kulyanik's policy briefing on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.